continuing with our series in Ephesians, and I've been I've been so blessed, I've been so encouraged by our uh, interaction around Ephesians. When we started the series, when we started thinking about fasting and praying and reading through the book of Ephesians uh, during this time, we had no idea that all this was going to happen. But what a relevant way to engage! And I want to encourage you on Facebook. There's daily devotionals around what we're reading together and fasting through together as a church in Ephesians. So take a moment to uh, to look through that. Take take some time to have a look at that. JP did a great job last week. Great message to go and listen to. Uh, he did a great job last week about taking us through Ephesians chapter 4. And today I get to continue with Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to start reading in verse 1. It says Ephesians chapter 5 and verse one says, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. This little line, be imitators of God as dear children, has this word in there, imitators. What does it mean to be an imitator of God? Now, the Greek word used here for an imitator of God is the Greek word mimites that says, um, that, that means an imitator, a follower, or even a copyist. And mimetes is where we get our word mime from. Now, now uh, JP was mentioning the introverts. Well, I want to tell you that, that uh, I might not look like an introvert, but internally I am. And I'll never forget the day when I was walking down the street at the, at, in the, and this mime came up from behind and he started mimicking my way of walking. Now, I know I'm going to say this, and next time you're going to see me in person, you're going to you're going to laugh at me. I walk funny, okay? And I walk in a real particular way, and my feet are like duck's feet, and it's all over the show, and 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 so I do walk funny. It's okay. Good thing is, we're, we've got social distancing, so you're not going to see me walk for a while, so I'm safe. This is it's a safe place right now. And I, I can see you guys laughing at me even in this moment. But fact of the matter is that with with this mime were walking he was walking behind me and as he was walking behind me he mimicked exactly all my mannerisms and suddenly i could see the way i must be i look to this world because the mime was repeating my actions well when paul writes to the church in ephesus and he says be imitators of god what he's writing what he's implying is he's saying be mimes of god you you are the you are the reflection on earth of god in heaven. How relevant is that for us in this season? How do we reflect God, God's heart, God's perspective, God's image, God's hope in the season of COVID-19? How do we show the world the way God sees, the way God believes, the way God has hope for this time? And I want Amen. to encourage you to, to take action to show God in every way, in every facet, in every space that you're at. Go and go and do that. So Paul then transitions in, in chapter five. So if we pull up chapter five, you'll see that 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 Paul goes and he 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 speaks about us and how we should imitate God in three different ways. And he actually uses a pattern that is repeated over and over and over in the Bible many times over. So uh, th this pattern actually starts out in the book of Genesis. When, when God first reveals himself, he reveals himself in these three ways. And, and, and God says this, God says, God is, and then it says, God is, and, and he starts this revelation of God. He says, God is love. Then he says, God is light. And then he says, God is love. And these three things, God is life, God is love, God is light, and God is life. These three things is repeated not only in Genesis, does God reveal himself in this way, but you can see all the way through to Revelation, you'll see continuously these three revelations of God be repeated and be mimicked in the Bible. So it continuously says God is love, God is light, and God is life. And if you read through this chapter five of Ephesians, you'll see that Paul goes on and he actually displays or explains to us if we're mimicking God, if we're the mime, the copyist, the image, the reflection of God on planet Earth, we need to be these three things to the people around us. So he starts off and he goes, uh, be imitators of God. And then Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2, he says, and walk in love. God is love. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and gave, given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. So 
as we walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Now, I, I cannot tell you how many times in the Bible the idea of love and give goes together, right? So every time it says God loved and then he gave. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So love as Christ loved and because he loved, he gave. So the, the fact of the matter is that we've been called to not only love, but we've been called to give because the way, the verb, the, the practical outflowing of love is giving. This is a season where more than any other season, people are hoarding onto themselves. People are, 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 are pulling in. They're closing their fists tightly. They're, they're, they're trying to hide everything. I mean, they're even hoarding toilet paper. Okay, and if you're one of those toilet paper hoarders out there, we've got your number. We're coming to knock on your door when the time comes. Okay, but the fact of the matter is that that people are hoarding onto themselves. They're they're afraid. They're scared, so they're pulling in. They're saying, "Listen, I'm I'm, I'm going to hold on to myself. I'm not going to I'm not going to be giving. I'm not going to be be giving away. I'm I'm going to be tight fisted." Well, here's the problem: the more tight fisted you become, the the less you love, the less you receive love. A closed hand can't lose anything, but a closed hand can't receive anything either. And, and I want to encourage you, be imitators of God and love. Be imitators of God and give. Be imitators of God and be generous in the season. Help out in the season. Be out there. Show the love of God. And if I if I can take a moment here just to speak to the members of Five Soft City Church, and if you're visiting us online, I'm sorry, these next couple of seconds are not for you. But for those of you that are members of Five Soft City Church, can I encourage you that right now, now, as a church, I want to encourage you to not only continue to be generous in the season as you've been generous, but would you pray about, about being more generous in the season as we reflect something of God as a church? I want to tell you, I want to be on the front foot in my personal giving. I've been challenged by God to say in this season when we're holding in and we're looking out at our 401ks and we're going, oh, boy, I want to go, my trust is not in the strength of currency or the strength of the exchange rate or the strength of the stock exchange or the strength of this or the strength of that. My trust, my faith is in the living God. And I'm going to be front footed in my giving, in my generosity in the season. And, and the great thing about the way 512 City Church is set up is you're giving digitally online as we're gathering like this is as easy as it was when we were physically together right so other than the physical envelope the online giving you go to the website it's all on there the app has everything on there i want to encourage you to do that in this season second thing paul writes about is he's writing to the church in, in ephesus in ephesians chapter five is he he brings the second revelation he says god is light and that he gets to that in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. He says, for you were once darkness. You were once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. So he goes from you were darkness. And now he says, you are light. We are light. If God is love and God is light and we are the imitators of God, then we are love and we are light light. Now, I wish I had time to go into this, but if you if you look at the next couple of verses through to verse 13, you'll see that he explains two details about what it means to be light. And the one thing he says about light is he says that light, light makes visible. So he writes about the fact that light has the ability to make things visible. visible. Light brings things to the light. It doesn't leave things in darkness. I believe that this is a season when clarity is pivotal. Um, Karen shared, Lord, give me vision. Did you hear that when she shared that word? I, I was so encouraged about this because that's exactly what I think God wants us to do is God wants to use us to bring clarity, to bring hope, to bring excitement, to bring a reason to live. And may this season be a time where God also brings clarity in your life. May the clarity of his voice, the clarity of his purpose, the clarity of the hope you have in Christ be clear in everything that you do. The second thing that is clear from the scripture uh, is in verse, uh, that's verse 13 says it's visible, but verse 11 says that it brings fruitfulness. Light brings fruit. Any plant out there can't bear fruit without the light. And I want to tell you, as we journey in the season in the light, as um, 
we make time for God and we make time for one another as we're as we're allowing his light, God that is light to shine in our lives, to shine in our darkness. I want to tell you that God that is light will bring about great fruitfulness. I know what they're saying about the economy in America right now. I know what they're saying about the global economy. I've I've read the same news articles you've read, but I want to tell you the anxiety I feel in my heart goes away when I spend time in his life because I believe that God will bring about fruitfulness in this season and in this time in our lives as we allow his light to shine on our endeavors. And I'm I'm praying that God will give you the creativity, the innovation in the season of disruption, that, that there will be great fruitfulness in your lives, in your relationships, in your marriages, in your finances. I believe that as we journey in the light, we can be fruitful in the midst of a dark season. May his light shine brightly on us as we are the light. May we bring fruitfulness to the companies we work for, for the spaces we engage. As 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 I'm as I'm seeing a bunch of you in front of me, and I know there's there's many more watching online right now. I want to say that my prayer for you is great, exceptional fruitfulness in this season and in this time, in whatever it is that you do. So God is love. God is light. We are love. We are light. But then lastly, God is life. And you'll see how Paul transitions in verse 14. And he makes this statement. He says, therefore, he says, awake you sleep, arise from the dead, become alive, arise from the dead, become alive, and Christ will give you light. Verse 15, see that you then walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Okay, so he says, Arise, those who are dead, become alive, and then walk circumspectly. And 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 this was interesting to me because he says, "Become alive." You, God is life, so you, therefore you need to become alive, but walk circumspectly. Think about the way you walk. To be circumspect is to consider your ways, consider your life. And if you if you then continue to read the rest of the chapter. You'll see how Paul gets real practical about considering your life, considering your personal disciplines, considering your walk with the Holy Spirit, considering submission to one another, considering husbands and wives. And he kind of challenges us to consider all these things. God is love. God is light. And God is life. And may every bit of our lives display the fullness of the wisdom of who he is. May we find life in him and live life fully in ourselves as we are his minds like that mind that walked on behind me mimicking every action may we walk on behind god may we follow hard after god may we seek hard after god and may we see the fullness of his love his light and his life in our lives as you are love may you give As you are light, may you shine bright in a dark age. And as you are life, may you flourish in every endeavor. May you flourish in all that you do. It was the year 410 AD and the world was ending. At least that's how the people in the Roman Empire felt in the year 410 AD. You see what has happened is they believed that civilization as they knew it was coming to an end. The, the city of Rome has, has, has just been sacked by barbarians, something which was thought unheard of. It was impossible to think that Rome, the, the, the all roads in the Roman Empire leading to Rome, the epicenter, the place of civilization, the most civilized place on the entire planet. The, the, this, this incredible city was sacked by barbarians and, 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 and everybody was complaining and saying the world's going to end. This is the end of it. Civilizations over hundreds of thousands of people are dying and, and fear was rampant in the streets. And it's within this context that Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo, comes and he writes a book and he writes a book and maybe you've heard of this book before it's called the city of god and he writes a book about how in the light of the city of rome this this epicenter this this unshakable city as the city is full and he writes a book about the fact 
that there is another city, not just this earthly city, but there's a godly city. There's something which is beyond. There's something which is greater. And there's an eternal city, a city that will never burn, a city that will never fail, a city that will stay relevant even when it feels like the whole world around us is falling apart. And and, and I want to read you a couple of ex- excerpts from the book that, he, that Augustine writes. He, he writes this. He says, the earthly city glories in itself. The heavenly city glories in the law. What are you glorying in? What are you reflecting? The word glory is directly connected to the idea of light. What are you reflecting? What are you mirroring? What are you glorifying in your own life? This earthly city or the heavenly city? Is your eyes focused on this earthly challenge or in the heavenly challenge of God that he has available for us? Augustine writes in another place and he writes this, though good and bad men suffer alike. The good and mad, bad men and women suffer alike. We must not suppose that there is no difference between the men themselves, because there is no difference in what they both suffer, for even in the likeness of the sufferings, there remains an unlikeness in the sufferers. And though though exposed to the same anguish, virtue and vice are not the same thing. For as the same fire causes gold to glow brightly and chaff to smoke, and, and under the same flail the straw is beaten small while the grain is cleansed. So the same violence of affliction proves, purges, clarifies the good but damns, ruins, and exterminates the wicked. How will we respond in this season? Will we be what Paul encourages the Ephesian church to be? Will we be imitators of God, even as we go through the same afflictions, even as we go through the same challenges? Let us be love. Let us be light and let us be life. Let us be imitators of God. I don't often do this, but I came across a prayer this week that um, I really feel is such a strong prayer that I want to pray it over us today. Um, and it's a it's a prayer that's written by uh, Dr. Cameron Wiggins Baum of from Seattle, Washington, and he and he he wrote this prayer just recently, and he he called it a prayer for a pandemic. And I wanna I wanna read this prayer for a pandemic for you guys as we as we close our service today. And would you pray this with me in this moment? May we who are merely Incon- inconvenienced, remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors, remember those who are most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home, remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who have no options. May we who have had to cancel our trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the turmoil of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time, when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen and amen. May we be his light and his life in every facet of our lives. Thank you for joining us today to wrap us up.